Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Welcome back to the MatchNet podcast. Today, I have an amazing couple in front of me, virtually, but in front of me, uh, that they're going to be sharing their uh, story, their matching and blessing story, and how they had to change in order for to receive the blessing and for the blessing. So let's give them a welcome to Hevanja and Grace Kisley. Please. Uh, can you introduce yourself a little bit? All right. Yeah. Uh, hello. Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon. Hello. Uh, so uh, my name is Hebangja uh, Kisile. Uh, my wife and I live in Indianapolis, Indiana, the best state ever. Uh, and uh, we we are there as the pastors of the community. For two years now, we've been pastoring the Indiana community. So uh, I was born in the Democratic Republic of Congo. My family immigrated to the United States in 2014. And, and I lived in Michigan and before moving to Indiana. Uh, so that's, uh, that's about me. Maybe more can come up later. But that's... Cool. Great. Hi, Bunch. Hey, Grace. <laughs> I'm Grace. Uh, yes, I am the wife of Hibanja Kisile. And I also, as you said, I live in Indiana. Uh, I work for Women's Federation, uh, the US office these days. And yeah, just been kind of experiencing life as a married couple. I'm I don't know. I guess I was born in Russia <laughs> and my parents were missionaries, but I mostly grew up in California, the Bay Area. Um, yeah, but I've just I'm here now in Indiana. So now uh, maybe I should mention my most important job is being the husband of Grace. <laughs> uh, <laughs> when do you guys receive the blessing? We got blessed in 2022. Yeah. yeah, April twenty. April twenty twenty two. So it's been about a year and a half. Yeah, a year and a half, and a baby on the way. Hey, congratulations! Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So we we're excited to become parents soon. Uh, yeah, yeah. we we are looking forward to it. It's exciting. Ah, oh, that's great. It's nice like when couples introduce themselves in the podcast because it's kind of almost like you're seeing the end of the story. So you're going to about to watch a movie to hear like a, a whole story of challenges and things like that. But then you start knowing that it ends well, right? <laughs> With this introduction. Yes. So uh, well, Obviously, because we're here doing the podcast together. <laughs> <laughs> so that's very exciting. Um how what what is your story? How you guys um ended up here today uh, together, and what were the changes that you had to make in order to get to this point? Mm. Yeah, well, I always wonder where do I start with my story? Do I start from where I was born? Oh, uh, uh, but uh, our story begins uh in March, twenty twenty one. So that we first talked then, and but Grace and I knew each other from maybe 2018. 2018, we first met, and uh, yeah, we always like to tell people that we did not like each other. We were not, uh, we're not fun of each other's. Uh, so yeah, we weren't enemies. We weren't enemies. We respected each other, but uh, we would not consider each other as potential matching partners. Mm -hmm. uh, why? So we, uh, <laughs> why? Why, Grace? Well, I thought he was judgmental, and he thought that I was full of myself. So, Ooh. yes, that <laughs> yeah. down that. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's that. Yeah, I think. Well, we we had certain a uh, concept about each other. Uh, I, I think that uh, we had to overcome. Um, and so, yeah. And so for a long time, uh, I think Grace and I. I mean, we 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 talked with each other uh, whenever our path crossed. 
course, we greeted each other and and share about how life was going. But yeah, we would just ne never consider each other as potential matching partners. As and so, yeah, I think yeah for for me, Grace is the, the seventh person uh, I I talked I talked with. And so I had six matching processes before uh before Grace. Yes. And so, yeah. For me, the biggest change that I had to make is I had to clarify my identity. Yeah. So for a long time, I had a clear a clear vision for what I wanted in a spouse, and I had written it down on um, points for points. I think maybe I started with like I think maybe twenty points of that I wanted to see in a potential spouse and. Every matching process was kind of just me going through the list and see how oh, this person fit this fit 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 and then ah uh, maybe yeah they don't meet this criteria and so this is not the one so for a long time I, I that was kind of my my mindset and I had a clear list and I was sticking to it and 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 that was where I was I was you know but eventually I came to realize that. I was I was looking for a pastor's wife because at the time I am I was a pastor I became a pastor when I was 21 years old. Oh then so oh, I built my my matching dream um, around finding the pastor's wife. So I was looking for this kind of woman who would be a pastor's wife. Uh, and that was that was my concept until uh, I I came to realize that that's not my identity. You know, my identity is uh, I am a son of heavenly parents and, and not a pastor, uh, you know, and that's that really, really changed a lot uh, in my perspective. And it also helped me you know, to really change what I was looking for. And at that point, I began to pray for God to send me his daughter. You know, and not not a pastor's wife, but his daughter. So that's kind of in a nutshell my my story. Right? Maybe we can go into a little bit more details uh, after, but I'll let Grace speak a little bit here. Yeah. Um. I guess yeah. In summary, like the main thing that I needed to change in myself was, uh. Yeah, I needed to learn how to surrender to God's perspective or God, like what God wanted for me rather than what I thought I deserved. Um, yeah, because I don't know, going through like, I think we've all had our own journeys of faith. And for me, um, it included, you know, a time where I distanced myself from the movement. And um, so, you know, I... I'm so grateful for the way that I found my way back. And like, it really gave me the experience of like owning my own faith and owning my own um, relationship with God and with true parents. But um, I think it also left me with this sense of like, these are, these are the areas in which, in which I function or like, this is who I am um, versus knowing really authentically. Yeah. Like, who God sees me as. And mm -hmm. so I think ultimately that was the main thing I needed to change uh, when I was going through the process. So like first, the first step was surrendering even to the idea that I'm, I'm to get blessed <laughs> and mm -hmm. surrendering to that idea. Um, and really like acknowledging how much I wanted that. Um, and then you know, over the course of a few different processes, I talked with some really amazing, yeah, each, I think, Hibang to two, like, really amazing people. Um, but I found myself kind of talking to the same type of person. And um, that type of person, I, I realized, like, I have a very strong character when I want to be. <laughs> and I had a very strong sense of, uh, like, what my faith was, and kind of, my yeah my own under like my just my own philosophies I guess and while I could I could you know come across as very convincing I think there was a part of me that also knew that like 
you know, at some, sometimes like I want to be able to, uh, feel like the other person isn't relying on me or not that they were relying on me, but isn't just agreeing with me, you know, Mm. that they have their own really strong relationship with, uh, heavenly parent and true parents. And, um, that, yeah. And it took me, (laughs) yeah, definitely a few, uh, a, a few years to kind of, uh, recognize that, that that was the pattern that I kind of kept falling into. Um, and that what really I, what it boiled down to is I wanted someone or I, not that I wanted, but I really needed someone who I, I perceived at least as having a really strong spiritual backbone, um, is what it came down to. And that was terrifying for me (laughs) because I think Mm. it forced me to face my own insecurities. Um, because, what came along with this idea of someone with a strong spiritual backbone is someone who is really judgmental. Um, But what I, you know, through facing that, I actually ended up realizing that it's not like Hibangja was like the only person that came to mind when I thought at that point, when I thought of someone who had a strong spiritual backbone. Um, And once I like was able to kind of overcome my resistance to that, um, what I found was that it was actually in his, in that faith, in that strength, that, uh, he was just trying to represent this point of like, you're, you're God's daughter (laughs) and like trying to embrace me the way that God would embrace me. Um, so really that insecurity was coming from myself. Um, so yeah, I think that was the biggest thing I needed to let go of was, my own concepts of what I was supposed, who I was supposed to be with versus what God told me I was, <laughs> I was supposed to be with. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Both of the points, uh, the changes there, the process that individually you had to go through, they're so important, right? Uh, for you, Kedancha, the fact that you're realizing that you have a very, a strict list of characteristics and how they need to be, this person needs to be, and realizing that is that, that was a pastor's wife role and that's what you're looking for instead of God's daughter. And kind of like you have to put the ideal of the blessing on top of the characteristics that you thought that you a pastor's wife should have, right? And changing and let it go uh those points and then for grace the fact that you had to uh understand what were the key aspects and you know it requires a lot of like effort and self-reflection to realize that you were falling into a pattern and that kind of person wasn't what you needed and that what you actually needed was strong faith. And that was the priority number one, right? Um, My question is, there's so many people as myself included, uh, but especially singles who are struggling to find a match because they are as well. They need it. They are, God is waiting for them to do some change, either perspective, either internal, something that needs to change, right? Um, for, for you, based on your experience, what are some advice and as well, what it helped you to change in those years, in those experiences? Yeah, I guess I'll, I'll go first. Uh, so for me, I had to make a substantial uh, change in my life. I think after after going through uh six different processes and yeah then realizing that yeah in a sense I was going in a, in, in circles I was you know and so so I I had a very good matching team there were many people helping me and pushing me forward I heard, I think maybe they will be listening sometime and Marjorie be singing and uh John Abel said uh, and and ma- many others were were supporting me. I think I had maybe a list of ten people all trying to find me a match. Uh, uh, so I think after six processes, 
as I think I was exhausted. I was exhausted and I had uh, I had to make some changes in my life. And one radical change that I had to make is I I stepped I stepped down from my uh, pastor's position in Michigan at the time. Uh, because I wanted to get out of that space where I was looking for a pastor's wife, I and so I made, uh, I made a substantial uh, change in my life in stepping down and just starting a business and going on the road, or I started a delivery business where I was just driving from state to state, and and that's kind of what I, I did. And through that time, I was just rediscovering myself as as a person, as uh, just as Hebanja and not as Pastor Hebanja, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and so just rediscovering myself through that uh, that process. And it is through that I feel that uh, the the actual, the substantial result of the matching and could come. So that's taking that step, I feel, yeah, I feel sometimes we need to kind of a change of environment or just making that substantial change in our life life becomes very necessary. So for me, it was uh, stepping down from my pastoral position and then rediscovering myself as in as a person. So you did that before even starting the matching process with Grace? Yes. Yeah, oh. I was before starting the matching process. I think maybe eight months before starting the matching process with Grace. Okay, so you cannot blame Grace then. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I didn't force it. Into it. No, she didn't force me into it. <laughs> <laughs> Very wise thing for him to do because I feel like it really uh, reduced at least a little bit of the barrier for me. Uh, yeah, I think it would have been a lot harder to overcome my 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 resistance if he was still a acting pastor in that moment. So, yeah. <laughs> and I feel I had I stayed uh in my pastoral position at the time, uh I probably would not be uh blessed with grace right now because I would uh, I would still you know be seeking in for that pastor's wife. I you know I think sometimes um, our environment or the situation that we are in just clouds uh, our our perception and you know of, of what is and prevent us to see exactly what is it that God is doing in our lives. Uh, so, I just want to comment that this is huge because we have so many people that don't want to get blessed because they have a very strong mission and they feel that they had to let go of their mission in order to receive the blessing and that's against God's will right oh God doesn't want me I'm serving God therefore it will be very easy for you to justify you have like 100 ways to justify your role as a pastor and therefore yeah. not receiving the blessing or having a struggle to receive the blessing right um but it it shows up that life is very uh, changeable and it goes it, it it goes in different directions and today you are a pastor but you're a, pa a better pastor than what you were when you absolutely. were single yeah absolutely I, I feel yeah I think being blessed bring us to the next level or a higher dimension in, in serving God and I really feel I, I became I became more aware because my wife brings to my life a totally different perspective, a different dimension of life that I did not have as a single pastor. Uh, and so it made me better. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I just want to share a, a, an experience that I had when I, as well, I was trying to decide to go to the blessing or not. Uh, I want to at that time do UPA, but UPA was a post-graduation um course and you cannot receive the blessing during UPA and it was four years so uh, I was almost graduating I was thinking about going to UPA and then I had this experience with God where God told like very short story right but uh, <laughs> I had experience with God and God told me I don't need leaders I need family I need parents I need families and mm. I was like Oh, okay. I need <laughs> I need to focus on the blessing. And today I'm still a leader, but in from a different place, right? So yeah, that's that's amazing. 
Yeah, recently. Recently, my wife was was telling me that I feel my mission is to establish an ideal family. Mm. So what about you, Grace? Uh, how how you got to that point uh, of understanding what you need for your husband? Um, well, I, I find a lot of gratitude in like the entire um, matching process. Um, I think like I was, I think maybe a lot of people, at least when I was in the processes, I know a lot of people um, were talking about how um, basically like they didn't feel like they were, they'd grown enough yet to start looking or anything like that. And like, I understand that I had that barrier, but when I surrendered um, and just like surrendered to the fact, I mean, I had some great mentors around me who were just like, your point is to get, but like, you're supposed to have a family, like <laughs> um, kind of speaking through some of my, my stuff. But um, yeah, when I surrendered to uh, the idea that I don't need to be perfect in order to start, that was the beginning of me transforming. I think I, I grew so much quicker um, through just being able to like, yeah, grow through each of those processes that I like each of those conversations that I had with brothers. And it was through that process. Like, I feel like that's how it naturally just evolved. Like I, I came to understand this, this deeper part about myself and like it, it got clearer and clearer um, over that that period of time, like the, yeah, the type of person that I was supposed to be with. So, yeah, I think it was just the fact that I started, <laughs> the fact that I surrendered and I just surrendered to the process. Mm. Yeah. I guess like time and trying and trying again, even if it didn't work out the first time. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I was I was grateful to have yeah also a good matching team who would always challenge my you know my interpretation of a matching process ending and you know I think mm -hmm. they would always remind me that okay this is not a failed matching process as you know this is a learning experience and it is true looking back had I not I think each person I uh, I talked with uh really prepared me for the next person I would talk with and ultimately prepared me for my conversation and my matching process with Grace. Yes, and I feel had I not talked with uh, the, the different sisters I had talked to before, my matching process with Grace would have been a lot more challenging. Mm -hmm. I feel so it's like every every process in a sense is a is a stepping stone on either to to the blessing or to a better version of myself yeah. so what what was the story of your matching process how it happened and how it evolved and what was the yeah the biggest challenges and processes that you had to go through mm. well the way it started was yeah i was like on the last person before Hibamja and that's when it like really hit me like it finally just like clicked like um yeah I was talking to a mentor like digesting the experience after um kind of ending that that conversation and it was just so clear like you need someone like you're you're not perfect in this area you you know and you you know that about yourself and you want someone who who can be that uh you know be kind of side by side with you in, in spirituality and things like that um so that there's always at least someone in the driver's seat driving the car and you don't that was the analogy she gave me you know <laughs> there's someone who's in the driver's seat um yeah regardless of where each of you are at spiritually in whatever moment and yeah so like I said like once I was very clear about that point of I want someone or I need someone with a strong spiritual backbone like the only person that came to mind was Hibanja um and I I had to deal with the resistance of that so I mean I was very 
intense with my conditions back then. So I did a, yeah, like a, a three day fast that was like right before foundation day. And I like said, okay, like after this three day fast, I will decide. <laughs> and, um, yeah. So after doing that, I mean, it felt, I felt very strongly. I needed to like tell my parents, um, like ask them to get in contact with this matching supporter and all of that. So that's what happened. And then, uh, yeah. So his matching supporter had a meeting. Yeah. So, well, yeah. So what, what's happening at that time, I asked for some time uh, to not engage in the matching process. And I think this was before new year's 2021. And, and so, uh, at yeah, I think at the end of the year, uh, I started praying and I started praying and I remember it was January 1st, 2022, no, 2021, mm -hmm. um, 2021, January 1st, I said a, a, a very tearful prayer uh, and I say, uh, uh, heavenly parents, I really want to start a matching process before the end of February. Yeah, and I prayed like that. And at the time, my matching team was meeting uh, weekly to look at profiles, to discuss about different possibilities. Is And at, at that point, I had, I had changed my approach. So I decided that my matching team had to agree. And so there were, there were four who were meeting uh, weekly. That included my mother, one of my sisters, uh, I think John Ebelset and Marjorie Biesing. And, and so they made, oh, uh, maybe Andrea, maybe Andrea. They made uh, they made weekly uh, to yeah, to to look at profiles and discuss possibilities. Is and I had told them that by the end of February, if nothing substantial happens, I would like for you to stop meeting about me weekly. Yeah, you know, and uh, so they were devastated about that. They felt, is he giving up? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I had given uh, uh, God an ultimatum. Oh, um, man, I say by the end, uh, before the end of February, I would like to start talking with someone and or or I'll just stop investing altogether, uh, you know. Oh, uh, and so I had told my matching supporters not someone that I know. <laughs> I didn't want to talk with someone that I know because you know, I had talked with people I, I, I knew before and it just it just gets weird after for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so yeah, and so exactly at the end of, of February, you know, uh they were meeting every Thursday and on Maybe only on Tuesday, I called my mother. I was I was in Utah. I was with my delivery job. I called my mother. I said, remember, I told you by the end of February, if nothing happens, I would like for you to stop meeting for me. And she was devastated. And, and uh, she felt, well, what's going on? Just keep believing. And she tried to encourage me to see past my deadline. And, but I was quite serious about it. And turns out that very Thursday, Grace's family reached out. Uh, so it's exactly the end of February and Grace's his family reaches out and they look at it and they all, they, they all agreed, which was kind of my, my new condition that my if my matching team agrees, is how I'm going to talk with the person. And so uh, when my matching supporter called me to tell me, hey, hey, we have we have his suggestion for you. you know, and and then he told me that it was grace. I felt like God, God gave me a slap in the face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was like I, I felt a heavenly parent telling me, how dare you dare me, you know? <laughs> Oh, uh, and so, but I, I feel because it was aligned in terms of my timeline, I could trust and I, I could feel, okay, heavenly parents, I feel that this is what you want me to explore. I'm going to explore it with an open heart. Then I could open my heart to grace. Uh, so that was kind of the beginning of our matching process. But I imagine that that was an easy matching process, right? Like that was the first thing, but... Or, or was okay 
It was actually super smooth. Really? Oh, <laughs> wow. So different from all the other, yeah, like conversations. Like I just, I think it was so easy and not easy, but it's just the energy is different. It, mm. it flowed really well. Um, and I feel like my, my major holdup was like, you know, I, I was very honest and straightforward. That That's how I would approach the, the each conversation. Like I, I don't do, I don't do BS. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, BS, belief system. Yes. <laughs> so I, I was very by the book, you know, doing the 41 questions in 21 days. Like that was like kind of all I would do uh, and then evaluate from there. And yeah, and I was, and just, I, I saw really clearly that, you know, he's not at all the kind of person that I thought he was in that area, mm -hmm. but he was all the kind of person that I thought he was in terms of the good, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> well, I think the entire matching process was just putting our concepts to, to shame, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, every, what we thought of each other was not really what we were. Or, you know, and so, yeah, yeah, I remember I appreciated that from the very first conversation. I think I said, well, Grace, you know what? I've been talking to six people, you know, uh, so I want uh, I want to go straight to the points here. Uh, you know, what are you here for? Oh, uh, and see, yeah, we I think we were very straightforward. We talk about what's most important to us. I didn't know our favorite color. I didn't know our favorite season or none of that. We talk about really what was important to us. And and we realized that we aligned. And, you know, yeah, pretty quickly we, we, we could feel that we, we aligned and we wanted the same thing. And, but for me, it's, it was important that I could feel like I could trust Grace. I could trust mm -hmm. our faith. faith and I could trust that she can stand on her own. And, you know, I just... I felt I did not want someone I, I would be dragging or carrying on my back. I wanted someone who can walk alongside me. And I really felt that I could trust Grace to do that. Mm. It's so interesting because some people, I feel like we all go through challenges, but maybe at different times, right? And in your case, it sounds like it really took a lot of effort and heart uh, and time and some broken hearts to get to the point of meeting the right person and from there on was smooth path but then others they meet the person right away and then they have either challenges in the matching or in the blessing right so i guess we all have these challenges just at different times mm. Yeah, you know, I think yeah, challenges are kind of a blessing in some sense. You know, uh, if we push, if we push just a little bit harder, uh, if we yeah, we open our hearts to talking to that next person, mm -hmm. uh, then I think the doors the doors open, and you know, uh, it it does it does take a lot of energy uh, to to go past the challenges uh, is to overcome them, and perhaps that's where having a good team around us becomes very important. I feel for me, a, my matching team was very important to me because if I was doing it just by myself, I would have perhaps given up uh, long, long before, oh, you know, and so having a good team around becomes very important and in that, that aspect. So what about... In order to receive the blessing or after the blessing, do you guys have to go through any hard decisions, any personal changes uh, to put to prioritize the blessing, to choose the blessing first? I feel like, I mean, we joke about how like we basically didn't feel like we had a honeymoon period. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I don't know. I think we're very, we're both very strong-willed people uh, and stubborn. And yeah, so I think once we were blessed, I mean, in general, I think there's a, it's what I, what I heard a lot in the lead up to the blessing was that it's, it's kind of normal 
to have like this spiritual battle going on because there's, that's literally what's going on spiritually. Um, so that was a comfort to hear while I was feeling that way in like the, maybe the last month or two before the blessing. Um, but definitely, yeah, I mean, adjusting to living with another person (laughs) brings up all of your, all of the things that you still need to work on. Um, but it's been such a comfort through all of it that again, yeah, I think I could trust that like, we, we talked about this a number of times, but like, there is no door, there is no window in our room of the blessing. This is where we are. And yeah, it's been such a comfort to like, know that I'm with someone who values the blessing so much, uh, so much that they they're willing to work through it as well. And I think that's been really helpful. Mm. I always, I always joke that, uh, I thought I was perfect before (laughs) I received the blessing. (laughs) I mean, I was, I I was exposed to the reality of my imperfections through, through the blessing. (laughs) I think that was our first like argument during the matching process is he he would get annoyed at me mm-hmm. because I would say like, oh, I'm not perfect. Like, you know, like I'm not. Yeah, she would remind me over and over and over again that she's not perfect. And I'm like, would you please stop saying that? <laughs> uh, that's perfect in the eyes of heavenly parents. But nice. yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, I, I feel, yeah, there is. For us, I mean, we come from different cultural backgrounds and, and yeah, we were raised in different cultures and traditions and and I, I'm, I'm learning that even even people of the same race is, are still very different because every family has uh, its own culture and tradition and dynamic. And so yeah, it's been it's been a challenge to kind of navigate that and what what uh leveling the 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 plane and so it's it's been a challenge uh to navigate all that but ultimately i think we find uh we find our strength in that the blessing is eternal you know, and we are in this for eternity and so well maybe we have not figured this out to uh today we will figure it out tomorrow or oh, in eternity you know and so we find our comfort in in that grace how how what process you need to go through in order to accept hevancha to go back to become a pastor oh uh, I mean, that happened, what, maybe like four months into our... Yeah, I tricked her. <laughs> <laughs> so I think like, yeah, I mean, Hivan just said he was pretty, He, was, I mean, again, we were pretty straightforward. So like when he felt like, yeah, this is, this is it. Like, I think it was two months in. Maybe, maybe three, three, months. three months. In. Yeah. And like, I think I was afraid to say it. Like, it, it was like, I'm not supposed to make a decision yet. Like, it's too early. But I think, yeah even from then I was I was it was just different like it was it just made sense so I think when (laughs) Hivangja got approached I mean he was he was praying a lot on like what he should be doing uh do you want to share about that oh yeah well I was so I, I I started my delivery business and I lived on the road or oh, then it was fun. I think I made good money, eh? but uh, deep inside, I started feeling lonely and I was missing something. Eh? And I just started to feel in my heart that I wanted to go back into ministry and pastoring. Eh? And uh, around around the same time, I, I was approached to uh, for the opportunity to become the pastor in Indiana. Uh, but that was only four months into our matching process as and so i brought it up to grace as and she said well we are not committed so i don't think i should be making this decision with you oh yeah and so i felt so conflicted 
it by that because uh, I was thinking we we felt pretty pretty committed. I mean, I, after three months, we had taught each other. Okay, fine. Okay, I feel good with you. Oh, and I think we we can wait seven months and get much. Uh, that's okay with me. Me, yeah, but it wasn't uh, a substantial commitment, and in that in that sense, and so I felt conflicted because I wasn't sure what she thought about it because she she didn't want to engage with that area. Area, you know, so, so I I I pray. I like to pray. I pray a lot, uh, and so I, I I pray. And one thing that I do is that uh, uh, I pray. I pray about what I need or a situation I'm going through, and then I open like a, a textbook uh, from from our church, like Chon Song Young or something randomly. To see what heavenly parents can tell me through the reading, and and so that that night I stopped and prayed tearfully, and then when I opened, I opened uh, uh the the book, and there was true father saying, I do not much, uh, I do not much uh members for their own sake. After I matched them, I sent them on a three or seven year missionary work, <laughs> and so I I really felt okay. Uh, yeah, so maybe uh, I I feel we feel comfortable in our matching process. Maybe Heavenly Parent is is sending me uh, on a on a mi mission here. Uh, so I I really felt that's that's confirmation uh, there. So I I said yes to the mission, and but she didn't end the the matching process. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And for me, I think it was like yeah, like. I my feeling the reason why I was doing that is like of course like it was a challenge for me to consider because again like I didn't like like the idea of being in leadership like on such a visible level like was challenging for me <laughs> but like you know the point is that I I want to respect like each of us like really felt like we wanted to respect one another's callings. So like, what would I want in that situation as well? Right. Like if I felt like I was being called to something, cause that was actually one of the, the things we were discussed yeah. around him. Yeah. Um, I would hope that he would be supporting me in, in that. And so that's why as well, it's like, this is what God's calling him to, you know, who am I in this moment? to yeah like that's the point of the blessing is to uplift and support one another in the way that we're supposed to be going so mm -hmm. yeah so she maybe initially she thought she would not be a, a good pastor's wife but she's been an amazing pastor's wife so been doing a wonderful I've been job growing a lot i think god <laughs> it was right <laughs> <laughs> yeah sometimes i need to vent and she just listens so <laughs> yeah. so she's been an amazing pastor's wife and more she's she's doing amazing work with women's federation and so yeah that's that's the thing she is not only the pastor wife right she's she's yes of course because he she's her your your wife uh and you're a pastor but she's being grace and she's been uh doing her own mission right and uh, which role do you take in Women Federation? You say. Uh, uh, right now I am the sub region, like the Midwest region coordinator for Women's Federation, and also the Global Women's Peace Network national coordinator. So that's wow, my titles. <laughs> <laughs> Fancy titles. <laughs> so, yes. uh, Grace Hevancha, we're uh, close to the time ending time. What will be your kind of like last piece of advice for someone that they was that are in your shoes when they were single. Uh, this is a, a, a podcast for single, uh, amazing men and women that they might be in a struggle with the same things like you. What do you will tell them? Um, I think what comes up for me is uh, I think I'll, uh, in my in my process. And I think in a lot of us, our process, we, we talk about how, um, 
you know, it should be that we should surrender to God's will. It's like, not my will, thy will. I know I was repeating that a lot, but I feel like sometimes we think of it as like a sacrifice. Cause I think in some ways it's talked about as like a sacrifice, like I'm willing to take anybody, God, whatever. But, um, what I've found is that in surrendering, it's actually the biggest gift because by, by letting go of my own understandings, it really brought me to what my heart really longed for. And it really showed me that like God just wants the best for each one of us. And so the, the process of surrendering and the process of letting go of our concepts is not actually a process of suffering. <laughs> it's really the process toward getting to the most joy um, and most love. So yeah, I would encourage people to kind of maybe reflect and shift their mindset around why we would want to let go of things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I think, yeah, I don't know how to top what she just said, but <laughs> I think on a, on a more kind of external or practical, uh, it's just, yeah, give give God give, give God a chance to work in, in your life. If you're not being God, wants to work in each of our lives but he cannot if we don't let him and so uh, give God a chance to work in your life and then just give that conversation a chance as you know like I, I give I give the conversation with grace a chance although I had concepts about about grace and I just allowed God to work through it. And here we are, are blessed. And it's a beautiful thing. I think God wants the blessing for each each person. Um, but it doesn't happen unless we really give it a chance. So mm-hmm. give the blessing a chance. Give God a chance. And give that matching conversation a chance. And you for surrendering and giving a chance. <laughs> Well, thank you, Helen Jahan. Thank you, Grace. You guys are amazing. So inspiring uh, to hear your story. And please give them uh, some love in the comments. Send them a message if you listen to this podcast. It's really great to he- hear not only feedback, but the impact that these stories have in your life. So thank you so much for listening until the end. And I hope everyone to see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.